Hello everyone, welcome to AS and A Level Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and in today's video I will be showing you how to answer AS Biology past questions focusing specifically on chapters 1 and 2. If you haven't watched the videos I made for chapters 1 and 2, please make sure you start there so that you are able to follow some of the questions that I will be answering in this video. All the questions that I am answering were taken from physicsandmathstutor.com, so make sure you go there and check out some of the free past papers that they have for CAIE Biology. They also have fact sheets, they have summary notes that you can use for your revision for your examination, so please make sure you don't miss out on that. So like I said, these videos will be focusing on chapters 1 and 2, so it's just a few of them. I think there are about six questions in this slide, uh, but just to get you comfortable with some of the types of questions that you would get in CIE. So this question says here that this diagram shows a high power drawing of a bacterium, and you can see the different labels of the bacterium. And it says which three components are found in both this bacterium and an animal cell. If you look at the options, it says capsule, cell membrane, and cell wall for option A, capsule DNA and ribosome for option B, cell membrane, cell wall and DNA for option C, cell membrane, DNA and ribosome for option D. Can you guess what the answer is or do you know what the answer is? The correct answer is D. Animal cells do not have a capsule or a cell wall. That means options A, B, and C where you have capsule and cell wall and not the correct answers and the only answer that's possible is a D. Animal cells do have a cell membrane, they have DNA, and they certainly have ribosomes. The second question says the, electro, the electron micrograph shows a cell and it says what is the actual diameter of the nucleus. Now if you look at this video you will see that there are some dark dots in the midst of that drawing um, or of this micrograph rather. Those dark dots are actually part of the cell so if you look at it very closely you will see that this is an animal cell and it has a circular membrane that is around the dark dots that you see. In the center you can see the nucleus which is stained. And what you need to do in this case, um, so I know that it's going to be a bit hard to calculate this one, but I just thought I would share the tips with you. What you do with a question like this is that you take a ruler and you measure the diameter of the nucleus in millimeters. Remember the diameter is simply measuring from one end of the circle to the other as shown with the red line. Convert it to micrometers by multiplying by 1000 and that will give you the image size. Then use the formula magnification is equal to image size over actual size. From the image you can see that the magnification is times 5700 5, and then you can calculate the value of A. According to the mark scheme for this paper the value of A was around 6 micrometers. So that is the answer you should be getting if you're working on the paper physically. This question says, which structures are found in typical eukaryotic cells? 70S ribosomes, 80S ribosomes, linear DNA, circular DNA. I'll give you a while to just look at this and guess what do you think would be found in a typical eukaryotic cell. So we definitely know that ATS ribosomes are in eukaryotic cells, right? And we also know that linear DNA, that is chromosomes, are also in eukaryotic cells. But what about 70S ribosomes and circular DNA? The temptation with this question would be to say that the answer is D, but the actual answer is A. And I will explain this to you. This is a trick question because again, when you look at it, you think to yourself in a typical eukaryotic cell, you have ATS ribosomes and you also have linear DNA. But you also need to remember that in typical eukaryotic cells, you have mitochondria and chloroplast. Mitochondria and chloroplast are said to be prokaryotic organisms that existed on their own before they were engulfed by eukaryotic cells, which means as prokaryotic organisms, they had 70S ribosomes as well as circular DNA. So now that they've been engulfed by eukaryotic cells, that means that they have 70S ribosomes, circular DNA within the eukaryotic cells. So that means you have to select all four structures in order to verify which ones are found in a typical eukaryotic cell. 
Oh, now this is an interesting question on chapter two. The diagrams show different types of bonds that are found in biological molecules. So when you look at number one, it shows you an NH bond to an oxygen. Um, number two shows you a sulfur to sulfur bond. And number three shows you um, a carboxyl bond and an amine bond. Um, number four shows you um, quite an interesting bond, um, an NH2 with the with the oxygen. And number five shows you a carbon to oxygen to carbon as well. And it says which combination of bonds could not be found in a protein with a tertiary structure. So I don't know if you remember when we covered tertiary structures in proteins. Again, if you haven't watched that video, please make sure you go and check it out. But we did say that the tertiary structure is held in place by four different bonds. These include the hydrogen bonds, the disulfide bonds, the ionic bonds, as well as the hydrophobic interactions. Now, with hydrophobic interactions, you can't necessarily draw them as a bond, so we know that those are not here. But what we can see is that number four is certainly an ionic bond because it shows the charge on the two bonding components which is an amine group as well as an oxygen that has lost an atom you have number four um, number five rather which is a glycosidic bond because remember when you form a carbohydrate you have a carbon bound binding to another carbon both with an oxygen between them number one is certainly a hydrogen bond number two is a disulfide bond because it shows the binding between two sulfur molecules and number three is an amine bond because that is the bond that you would find um, whenever you have an amine bond. So the only bond that you cannot find in a protein would be number five because it is a glycosidic bond and glycosidic bonds are only found in carbohydrates. This is a question from chapter two. Polar molecules form hydrogen bonds with each other. Which properties of water result from its molecules being polar? So the first one says it's a good solvent, which we know for sure. It has a high specific heat capacity that was discussed in the video on water. Um, it has a high surface tension and it is cohesive. So when we say a molecule is cohesive, it simply means that there are forces of attraction between the molecules of the solvent that is water. And the answer here is certainly A. All of these are a result of water being a polar molecule because it is a good solvent simply because its molecules are able to bond with each other. Their hydrogen bonds make it easy to dissolve any solute you add to water. Well, not any solute, but polar solutes as well. It has a high specific heat capacity, and what this means is that it takes a high change in temperature for you to change the temperature of water. And this is important, especially when you think of rivers and oceans, the fact that their temperatures are able to stay, stay stable and keep aquatic life um, living comfortably is the result of the high specific heat capacity of water. The high surface tension is basically the force that is on the surface of water and water does have a high surface tension and it is also cohesive. So all of these properties just like I said are a result of the strong hydrogen bonds of water. This is another question. Which description is correct? A collagen molecule has a high proportion of amino acid glycine, which has a very small side chain. A group of three collagen fibers forms a strong insoluble coiled structure termed a triple helix. Each of the collagen polypeptides in a collagen molecule has a regular spiral arrangement of many alpha helices. Peptide bonds are present between amino acids of the same polypeptide and between the different polypeptides forming the collagen molecule. So which one of these do you think is correct? Well, the answer is A. If you watch the videos on biological molecules where I discuss collagen, um, you will see that collagen is made up of many repetitive units of glycine. Glycine has a small side chain, which is simply a hydrogen. And what this means is that glycine is then able to coil very closely together. The reason why D is incorrect is because peptide bonds are indeed present between the amino acids of the same polypeptide, but they are not present between different polypeptides from in the collagen molecule. Remember that collagen has a cutlery structure, which means that it has more than two polypeptide chains, or rather it has two or more polypeptide chains. And the bonds that hold the polypeptide chains together are the same bonds that will hold a tertiary bond together, um, a tertiary structure together rather. And this means that it has the hydrophobic interactions, the ionic bonds, the hydrogen bonds, and the disulfide bonds. So that makes D incorrect. C is incorrect because there are no 
alpha helices within the polypeptides that make up collagen. B is incorrect simply because even though collagen is, is a triple helix, it is not made from three collagen fibers. A single polypeptide does not make collagen fiber. So when we say a group of three collagen fibers form a strong insoluble coiled structure termed a triple helix, that makes it incorrect. If you have any questions about this video, please make sure you reach out to me. This is the end of all the questions that I decided to answer. Again, it's just to introduce you to the kinds of questions you will get in CIE. And the reason I am doing this is because I am aware that many students do study well for the exams, but because they have no interactions whatsoever with past papers, they tend to perform abysmally. I don't want you to be one of those students. I would like to see you excel. So please make sure you reach out to me with as many questions as you have, and I will try as much as possible to answer them in the comments. Thank you for joining me on this video, and I hope you watch the next video as well. Have a good time. Goodbye.